Hello and welcome to an unboxing of Crusader Kings, the board game. Uh, I've just popped into the office to pick up this box that was delivered. Unfortunately, I've been off work sick for the past few days, so apologies for the gruff sounding voice. Uh, this is a big box, so let's tuck right in. My trusty, trusty box cutter. Okay, we've got some, we've got some packaging inside. We have, I'm going to just slip that out for a second, quite a bit of bubble wrap going on here. This is what we're after though. So let us see, we have Crusader Kings, the board game corset. Uh, we've also been sent a nice little expansion, uh, the Counselors, oh, Counselors and Inventions expansion. So we'll check out that in a second. First of all, onto the core game. Uh, those of you who follow the, the website will know that we spoke with Free League at the UK Games Expo last year, and they gave us a quick wee look at Crusader Kings the board game. Uh, you'll also know that Crusader Kings the video game is one of my favourite video games, so very excited to be having a look at this. Uh, again, box cutter, ideal for cellophane. Beautiful. So, first thing to note, the box is very nice. Very nice. They, they obviously got the publishing contract with Paradox Interactive, so all the artwork is the official Crusader Kings artwork. Uh, so let's pop open the box and have a look at what's inside. There is a lot of text around the edge of the box. I'm thinking that that is uh, the backers' names. Yeah, we've got special thanks to Royal Edition backers. Very small ticks around the edge of the box. Uh, ninety percent off Crusader Kings two for the PC, which I already own. Plus Pagan Fury EP DLC for free. I don't think I've got the Pagan Fury one. I've got the Viking Rock one. Anywho, we have. One instruction manual, one game board, uh, lots of sheets of stuff, lots of sheets of stuff. So here we go, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six sheets of popping out tokens. Uh, so most of these we've got our traits here, so we've got traits such as Lustful and rowdy and cruel, ugly, haughty, coward. Those are all the negative ones, obviously. Uh, positive ones, honesty, chaste, kind, attractive, brave. And then we've got some of the, the clan or the house sigils and stuff on them as well. So they're pretty cool. Got the HRE one there anyway, I recognise that one. There's the English one. Uh, the Scottish ones on this one as well. Uh, then you've got, there's some key tokens on here, so they are ones for Crusader, First Player, Builder, Inventor, and the King of Jerusalem. So I imagine those are for later on in the game. Uh, you've also got child tokens there. Because uh, as you know in Crusader Kings, your dynasty is everything. So the game, as I recall from our, our go through it at UK Games Expo is is very much like the video game the idea is growing your dynasty and making sure your children have these good traits and that they will be successful heirs to whatever kingdom you're ruling. Next up in the box we have tokens. We have miniatures. Uh, so we've got here is some castles and we've got some armies uh, which are foot soldiers and then there's some knights as well. 
So hopefully you can see that okay. Hopefully you can see that okay. Through the through the plastic. Even the even the plastic's got Crusader Kings embossed on it, so that's pretty cool. And there are some more knights here in this smaller set as well. Then we have decks of cards. So we have develop cards and player uh, character cards here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have a look at the book in a second to just go through these decks. There's some plot cards and action cards here. Uh, then there's the there's a crusade deck there, more action cards. So that, that just might be one action deck with lots of different events that can happen. Again, like in the video game where random events happen all the time. Then we've got, in here I believe is the player boards, which that's what it looks like. So you've got the different houses, the Norman, that's House of Normandy, is at the top of this pile. Uh, and then there's a the player board in behind that. And then we've got the player bags. Uh, so during the game you put all your trait tokens inside the bags and you've got to pull them out at certain points. So let's actually take a look at the rule book and a look at the decks. So, there are 125 character cards, 24 of them are starting ruler cards, and then, oh, so there is, there is other cards here, there's development cards on here, so let me just remove them first, uh, character, 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 so these are all, these are all character cards, and then um, we've got 24 starting rulers, uh, so I think these are those. So yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Oh yes. We'll keep that one to the side for a minute. So the character cards do have on the back of them. They've got the house or realm that they belong to. So we've got Italian. We've got Iberian. We've got Germanic. Frankish and English. 20 for each culture. So there's five. Is that five? Italian, Iberian, Germanic, Frankish, and English. Yes, that's five. So there are the starting rulers and then 100 culture character cards. 20 for each culture. Uh, and then, of course, a Crusader Kings game would not be complete without Glitter Hoof. Um, if you play the video game, you know enough about Glitter Hoof. Many's a mad king has fallen for Glitter Hoof. We have uh, 155 action cards, so that's why they were in two decks. The action cards. But they are split into different categories. So we have 35 realm cards, 35 intrigue cards, 35 war cards, 25 tax cards, and 25 crusade cards. And we'll see where they go on the board shortly. So, uh, here, are some of the, here are some of the traits that have popped out of the boards. Uh, we have, some of them have uh, gold rings around them, and they are our starting ones. So we see we've got uh, Lustful and Honest here. They've got gold edges to them. So they are starting traits. Then we have event traits. Uh, for example, I have pious and ugly here. And they have silver backgrounds to them to mark that they are event traits. Then we've got black ringed ones, which are the crusade trait tokens. Now all of these are bad, but really, although cruel is seen as a negative trait, it's probably one of the best traits in the video game and probably is the same in the board game too. And then we've just got some random regular trait tokens which have no background to them. Here we've got Humble and Abyssal. Uh, again, so the, in, during the game, these go in the bag and you draw out some of them and I think you have to pick which ones to keep. But we'll find that out soon. 
then also, like we said before, we've got the Dynasty Shields here. So let me just pop one of these out. Uh, this is 104 of those. There is gold value tokens. Somewhere I didn't see those ones. Ah, there they are. Uh, yeah, so these are value one tokens. There's value five as well. This is value five. Kind of hard to see in the light. Value five token. And the value one token with it. Both tokens. Uh, then we said we had the first person tokens and where are those? Oh yes, they're on this one. So we got the first player, first player, crusader, builder, inventor, king, Jerusalem. So there's like the first player token there. Very nice. Uh, then we've got. There's some unrest tokens. And there, are, yes, there, there's several of those. There's 20 unrest, no, 12 unrest tokens, uh, six plague tokens, six harvest tokens, and six crop failure tokens. So again, they can be, I imagine they are random events. Oh, the outbreak tokens are double-sided as well. So you've got Plague Outbreak on one side and Outbreak over on the other. Uh, unrest tokens. And Harvest tokens. Then there are Age tokens, which are these uh, hourglasses. So they just look like that. Uh, then we've got child duke tokens so those are ones that have wee crowns on them so you've got your children and they've got wee crowns on them children with wee crowns on them and they are the colors of the um cultures and then there are sibling ones as well so those are, oh, the sibling ones are on there too um because everybody knows Crusader King's siblings can be your worst enemy. Okay, so here we're going to have a look at the... Uh, what were they called again? The, the family boards. So here we have a family board. Here we have a family board. So on it you've got space for three inventions and three counsellors. Your culture character stack uh the king which would be the person you are uh, assimilating your spouse two siblings and three children over at the side there's a space for politics so you've got pacts casus belly and war so you're putting on there there's four spaces the game plays up to five players so you're putting there who you've got claims or wars against uh, the other players then we've got the dynasty cards. Now, while there was 20 characters for each culture, there's not the same number of dynasty cards for each culture. For example, the Frangish, only, there's only one. The House of Capet. Um, for English, there are three. Germanic, also three. Uh, Italian has four. Iberian, there's two. Um, so in terms of the actual houses, there doesn't seem to be anything different. There's just some flavor text on those cards uh, and a slot for the treasury. Uh, then we've also got the actions cards. Also got the actions cards, which on the result, on the reverse have a sequence of play. So, Let's have a quick look at this. Uh, the sequence of play. Each game consists of up to three eras. Each era consists of three rounds, and each round consists of two turns. Okay, so three, three, two. Uh, the era, you draw action cards in player order. You play.
play three rounds, and then you clean up. So the round has the dynasty phase. Each player in player order may make one attempt to marry his king, a sibling or a child, and may then grant or revoke any number of duke and duchess titles. A plotting phase. Secretly decide which two action cards from your hand to play this round. Play them face down in front of you with the card to be played first on top. And turns, this plays two turns. And then there's an upkeep phase after the turns. Pay one gold for each of the foot soldiers on the game board. Paying for your soldiers. Then demobilize any that you want. Add one age token to your king. Uh, so in the turn, which was part three of the round, each player in player order reveals one or two action cards chosen during the plotting. The top card must be played in the first turn of the round and the bottom in the second. You must resolve one of the actions indicated at the top of the card. Once the action is fully resolved, read the event below and image on the action card. So let's have a look at, go back to the, the action card. So let's just pick one here. Let's just say I've, I've picked one up here, which is a tax card. Thieves in the night, self. Unknown culprits steal two gold from your coffers, so you'd have to pay two gold. If you have the Royal Guard development card, you can stop the theft with a successful trait check. You cannot spend gold for multiple draws. <laughs> Alright, so that, that that certainly didn't sound like a good one. But maybe, maybe that was the best of a bad lot. Uh, so here's, here's one, the, the most familiar one. Um, if anybody watches me on Twitch uh, and has followed me on Twitch, you will be familiar with the sound of a child being born and the image on the card. Um, so it requires a spouse. Healthy child is born to the king of the next player. Of the next player. That player draws a random character card for his culture and a random trait for this child. A king can never have more than three children if the king already has three children, the effect of this event moves on to the next player in the turn order. That's quite cool. That's interesting. So there's yeah, there's several of those child born ones. Um yeah, I mean there's there's like we said, what, hundred and fifty five action cards here? So I won't go through them all. Right now. Uh so that's the scheme of play. So so there are also actions on the other side of this card here. Um, draw action cards and play order. So play. You're playing three rounds and you're doing two turns. But you've you've done so. You've picked two action cards from your hand. You drew eight at the start of the era and you're doing three rounds. So you're going to play six out of those eight. So sometimes maybe that small tax is probably the lesser of evils in your hand. Um, I'm just trying to see where the actions on the other side of this card come from. So the actions on this card match the symbols on the action cards in the top corner here. So once you play one of these cards, you have to resolve the action from here. So in this one example, this is a development card, a build card. Uh, so you can build a castle in a territory under your control. If successful, it costs you three gold to complete the castle, in addition to any gold spent on getting more draws. Critical traits, humble and ambitious. So it doesn't quite explain what that means. So you must first do the actions here before you can then do the flavor text that's on the card. That's how that works. Okay. Uh, so next, let's take a look at the actual game board. Okay, so here we have the game board. Um, I can't remember what base Crusader Kings map was, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit bigger than this, um, certainly towards the east. But I guess for the, the board game we've got, um, we've got the five cultures that are represented in the game, all captured within the map there. We've got the Iberian, the Italian, the Frankish, the Germanic, and the English. Um, so what we'll do, uh, as you can see also there's the area over at the sides for the different decks. We've got our development card decks, which we didn't go through. There's just a small deck of those. A treasury, and then this is the crusade track. Uh, let me just move around here so you can see that better. The crusade track here, which 
if I'm right in thinking, pretty much is the game stage track, because as you can see at the end, the game ends when someone captures Kingdom of Jerusalem. Because we are Crusader Kings after all, that is the whole point. Uh, so let's do a quick setup and see what the board looks like with everything on it. Okay, so that took a bit of time between catching up on Wimbledon and having my dinner and punching all the tokens, setting up the, the board game for uh, one of the example scenarios. So there are scenarios in the back of the book. Uh, I think it's five or six. Which tell you which families to use, which starting characters to use, and how to set up the board. Um, so I went ahead and set up scenario one in a three-player game. Um, I said about the tokens. There are 378 tokens altogether, so it took quite a while to punch them all. Uh, and the tokens aren't that great quality either, so there was a couple that have ended up dog-eared. Just get that into focus. Um, when I've punched them, there was also uh, one of the stream, one of the ones that the print's not quite straight, so it looks okay on one side, but on the other side, you can see that it's not centered at all there. Um, so it's a bit disappointing. There was another one of uh, one of these ones that ended up dog-eared as well. Okay, that focus. So yeah, the punch quality was was a bit disappointing with so many tokens. I mean, you can expect some some flaws, I guess, but yeah. So when there's less than five players, uh, obviously we spoke about before, there was five uh, regions. So in this scenario, I've just set up England, France, and Germanic. So it, with Italia and Iberia, you just block off those regions. Uh, and basically, they are unplayable, unusable during the game. Um, then the scenario tells you where to put down the knights and any castles on the board and in every other region you place down a character um, and give them a trait at random from the bag. Uh, this is the random bag here. As for the player board, you set up the king. Some of the scenarios will give you siblings, children, spouses as well. Uh, but this one just gave gave every player a king, and you get their four starting traits as well. So, uh, King Philip the first is gluttonous yet attractive, lustful and humble. Uh, then they get a certain amount of stack of money. They keep these tokens for later, and they get either one invention or counselor. In case of Philip the first, he has a chancellor. And then you've got your deck of characters there. Um, the treasury is set up with the rest of the money. You have the crusade track with a bunch of traits along it. So assumably as you progress, you will get gain these traits as you go along towards the end. Sorry for the shadow there. Hey, uh, and then finally we've got the the decks, the action decks. They are separated out into their different categories now. So we've got realm cards, intrigue cards, war cards, tax cards, and crusade cards. Um, and I didn't quite realise this to begin with, because uh, there was nothing really to say, specifying what was what was what. But then I realised that the symbols match the symbols on the board. Uh, so that's how you separate the, the the action deck into those decks. So that's it, that is the game now unboxed and set up, ready to play. Uh, we're hopefully going to go ahead and, and play a game of this now and we will be letting you know our first impressions and following up with a, a review on the site, so make sure to check that out. Uh, before we go though, let's take a look at that expansion box. Okay, so before we go then, uh, we've got this expansion box here. Uh, this is the Counselors and Inventions expansion. Um, it says, the set includes 24 additional beautifully crafted plastic miniatures for Crusader Kings the board game. These come in 12 unique designs that represent counsellors and inventions in the game rules. This expansion also includes bonus rules that will allow players to send their counsellors on missions in medieval Europe, rather than just staying at home at the Royal Court. All miniatures are sculpted 
by the talented artist Antoine Aguiluta. An An Anguiluta. I've, I've murdered that name, I'm sorry. Uh, let's just take a quick peek in here. I think when we play for the first time, we will probably leave this expansion out. Uh, although it does sound quite cool, the whole moving your councillors around the map is again a concept very, very familiar to those who have played the video game. Let's just take a look at the miniatures anyway. tray of miniatures and I will not lift them up any higher than that they'll still all fall out uh, and there's also here just a wee thin one page rule well one and a half page spread of the rules for the councillors six councillors and six inventions Using these bonus rules, you place the miniatures on the map to change effects of the development cards in the game. Okay, so a quick, uh, quick example. The court physician can be placed in any mobilised territory under the player's own control. If the player loses control over this territory, the player does not lose the foot soldier in it. Instead, the player may immediately mobilise any other territory under his control and place the foot soldier there instead. Okay, so it's like healing your troops so that they don't die. Um, so uh, the court physician, let's have a look. Which one is he? He's turned around a little bit. Uh, you can see him very well. Uh, there's, there's one really nice one here, which is the boat. That's a nice miniature. Let's just check that. That's probably to do with the Navy. Yep, Navy. A player may... Place the navy miniature in any territory with a coast on the same ocean as at least one territory under his control. When invading the territory with the navy in it, the player may use two mobilised territories with a coast on the same ocean in the attack. So I think the navy card, which is sitting right here, is pretty much the same as that, but it's just one. Yeah. Let's you invade any territory with a coast as long as you have mobilised the territory with a coast in the same ocean. Only one foot soldier can use the navy in a single invade action. So that just lets you do two rather than one. So they look like a, a nice wee addition to the game, but like I said, we will try out just the base game first uh, before we go into these, the expansion rules. All right, so we will hopefully have a game of this Crusader Kings the board game and let you know what we think. Thanks for now.